Hello and welcome back. I'm Shana Searcy. I'm so excited to paint with you today for another day in our watercolor sketchbook, our journals. And today we're going to do some cherry blossoms, a really beautiful flower that are very fleeting here in the U.S. in the summertime. Um, they have their peak season and then they're gone. Um, so we are going to approach these beautiful um, flowers we're going to do pink versions of them for one in two ways we're going to actually do a full watercolor one and then i'm going to do one that's more of an illustration stylized with some pen some ink and wash so stay tuned for both versions of that so let's get started with our first version which i'm going to do all watercolor no drawing um, and I'm going to use Quadacridone Magenta for the pink in my flower. So I'm going to need various values of this. So values, if you remember, if you've seen any of my other videos earlier on, value is the lightness or darkness of the color. So we're going to have a really light value, which has lots and lots and lots of water. We'll put these up here. And we'll have medium values, which has a little more paint, a little bit less water. And then we'll have dark values, which have lots and lots of paint, very little water. It just started downpouring outside. So these are kind of three values and there's lots of values in between these, but light, medium, dark um, are what we're gonna work with. So we're using Quadacridone Magenta for our pink. And then I'm also going to use sap green for our leaves. And last but not least, I will also use some raw umber. Oh, that's really dark. I think I had a little Payne's gray in there too, but some raw umber for the branches, which is a dark, cool brown color. Take a little out so you can kind of see. There you go. All right, so let's get that painting started here. So I'm going to do just um, some loose clumping of leaves. I'm going to start or petals, flowers, blossoms. I'm going to start with a really clean brush, one. And I'm going to start with my lightest value of my magenta. And these flowers have, you know, they're kind of a rounded petal like this, so a little wider at the top. There's usually five, or there are five. So we're going to paint a couple kind of face on, and then we're going to change the shape of a few by using some foreshortening. They're going to have some more details in the center. I'm going to leave a few white spots here. All right, and then I'm going to add some medium values in, in a few spots. There we go. The centers we're going to put in at the end, they're going to be wet on dry. So I'm going to make sure everything is dry and then I'm going to add the details of the centers, these little pokey up things. All right, so let's put, I'm gonna put in a few for this one. I'm gonna put in a few blossoms. Then I'm gonna put in the bark, the branch that holds them. And then I'm gonna build some more blossoms around that. So this one over here, so you can see I'm using the full shape of my brush. I'm pressing it down and kind of using the full shape to create that petal. This one we're going to kind of do from the side angle. So you're only going to see three of the petals from the side. Kind of almost looks like, um, what are the magnolias from the side? Like that. The petals are just, they're a little, a little wider, a little bit rounder. There we go. Let's do at least one more really, really light down here. I'm holding my brush really weird. <laughs> I normally don't hold it this way, but it feels really comfortable right now. I would say it's really important to um, 
experiment with your brush hold sometimes. Sometimes people get really stuck in how they think they should hold a brush or just the routine of how they normally hold it and they forget that holding it in different ways can create different effects and allow them uh, to really kind of play with the shape and create different textures. All right, so we have a few blossoms in already. We have one on the side, one behind. Let's put in our branch and it's gonna be kind of a crooked. We're gonna have to get right up on the tip of our brush. If you need to use a smaller brush to get thinner lines, go ahead and do that. I'm using a size 10 velvet touch brush. I'm so sorry, I didn't go over supplies, but uh, I use Core Paints, Q-O-R by Golden. It'll be in the description. Um, all the supplies and materials that I use plus more um, will be in the description. I'm using a size 10 velvet touch Princeton brush and I'm using a Baohong sketchbook uh, for this 140 pound cold press uh, paper, 100% cotton. Okay, so let's get to putting in the branch. All right, so my branch, again, I'm gonna use um, this brown. This is a burnt, nope, a raw umber. And I'm gonna water it down a little bit so I have some room to add some darker value. But I'm gonna get right up on, so I'm holding it vertical, and the amount of pressure will determine the thickness. So towards the bottom, it's gonna be a little thicker and then as I release the pressure, and you can see I'm making it kind of like angled, it gets thinner in spaces. And I'm gonna add some little nodes and nodules. I feel like I should have made it more go up through the center of here, but that's okay. I'm gonna add more blossoms around it. There we go. To kind of bring it all together. All right, so while that is drying, I'm gonna take some darker color and we're gonna add on some of these little nodules, these little bumps. So same color, just more concentrated. So now let's fill in some more. We're gonna be careful not to touch too many of those spaces, but we're gonna fill in some more flowers. We're gonna let them go behind. So this one is just gonna be right up to the edge. Be careful if it's still wet, but it's gonna be behind this branch there. I'm gonna put another one kind of on its side. over here and they can be different sizes too. You don't wanna make everything exactly the same size. And I'm also gonna make this one a little, put another one right back here. It's gonna go behind this one. And sometimes you just have to use your imagination of like, okay, this is the center, this is gonna be tucked behind, and this is all I would see sticking out. And that'll be more apparent when we add some of the center stuff in. And 
And now I'm just going back to some of my other blossoms and adding a little bit darker detail towards the center, creating some shadows. Because these petals are very delicate, but also reflect a lot of light or a little see-through in spots. So I'm using my medium value now. These I use the dark value when I did wet on wet, so it'll probably dry a little bit lighter. All right, let's let this all dry and then we'll add in our beautiful little centers and some leaves. Actually, you know what, we can do leaves while we're letting that dry. All right, so using my sap green, we're just gonna put on a few small leaves. There's not gonna be a ton because that's what the blossoms do. The blossoms eventually turn, I think, into the leaves. Or as they fall off, leaves start to emerge. Maybe they don't turn into them. So just putting a few little leaves on there. We're going to give some of them some darker edges so they too have light and shadow. They're not just flat little leaves. Right now we're gonna let everything dry and we're gonna come in and add those final details. All right, things are nice and dry. I'm gonna to switch to a smaller brush. This is a size four Princeton Velvet Touch. I'm gonna to get some really concentrated magenta. In addition, I'm gonna mix a little magenta with my brown and get this really beautiful burgundy color. All right, so right in the center, I'm gonna give these, we'll start here on this one. Sorry, I got a big blob of droplet of water there. Okay, there we go. I'm gonna start on this side. And now I'm gonna go, so I did that with the darker color and with my lighter color, I'm gonna put in these like magenta dots. And we're gonna use the tip of our brush to make the long, thin marks of the cherry blossoms, kind of centers. We'll do one over here. And you might need to even use a thinner brush if you have one, like a rigger or a liner brush. Let me see if I have one to show you. It's this very beat up one, but this is a rigger or liner which has these really long, thin um, bristles in it, which make it really easy to do nice thin lines. And because it's got a longer set of bristles it holds a little more paint so you don't have to reload as often as you would if you had one of these tiny little so they're about the same um let's see if you can see it there the same size 
but this one is very tiny. There's not a lot of place to hold water, so it's really for fair water and paint, so it's very, you have to reload a lot with one of those. And the ones that are on their sides, you're not gonna see the little center, so you don't really have to worry about those so much. We're gonna give this one a center here. And things that are behind, if you add more blossoms, you can really build lots of layers. Uh, things that are behind are darker inherently, so everything will just be a little darker and deeper. So these you don't have to add the centers to, but I am going to take my, I'm going to go back to my size 4 brush, and I am going to add a little bit more. medium values to them towards the base there we go and this one as well oh this one was not supposed to be on its side but that's okay it kind of looks like it is and I'm going to actually attach it to the branch here like this by just giving a little brown on the edge. And then you can add some thinner little twig branches that come out and kind of fill in some of the space. If you want to add more leaves, this would be a great time. Kind of look at your composition overall, add some more leaves. And there we go, we have our cherry blossoms. So keep going until you feel satisfied with the end results. You can keep playing with those medium and dark values to kind of build in a whole range of values in your flowers. Maintain some of that really light value though because that will help keep them soft and delicate and light. If you get too dark in all of the areas then it starts to get a little muddy and doesn't maintain that beautiful softness. So just be careful of that the more you add. I'm going to keep playing with mine but it could be done right now. So thank you so much for following along. I am going to do a second version where we're going to do a lot of drawing. So we're going to do a lot of ink work and I'm just going to put it over an overlay of colors. So check out that next video coming right after this one the next day. All right. Thank you all for watching. I'm Shana Searcy. Don't forget to check out the description for supplies and materials that I use on a daily basis, including the ones I used in this video today. Um, and follow me on Instagram and leave a comment, like this video, subscribe to the channel, share it with someone who you also think would enjoy these watercolor journal pages. Thanks y'all. Happy painting and I'll see you for the next one soon.